TikTok, the popular social media app, has become a contentious issue between China and the United States. While the app has been a source of entertainment for millions of users around the world, concerns have been raised about its potential use as a tool for espionage and propaganda, and the threat it poses to national security in the US. These fears have led to a growing rift between the two superpowers, with an unlikely Singaporean being embroiled in the saga. Who is he? Stay tuned to find out. TikTok is a social media app that allows users to create and share short video content using entertaining features such as music and filters. The app was launched in China in 2016 under the name Douyin, before being rebranded as TikTok for the international market in 2018. In 2021, the app reached 1 billion monthly active users worldwide, which was much faster than the time it took Instagram and Facebook to reach the same milestone. Today, it is one of the most popular social media platforms with over 100 million US users. TikTok's popularity has not gone unnoticed by governments around the world. In recent years, concerns have been raised about the app's data collection practices and its relationship with the Chinese government. The app's parent company, ByteDance, is based in Beijing and is subject to the national security legislation of China, which has led to concerns about the government's access to user data. Additionally, TikTok has been accused of censoring content that is critical of the Chinese government. For example, in 2019, The Guardian reported that TikTok had instructed employees to censor certain sensitive topics that might reflect badly on the Chinese government. The concerns about TikTok's ties to the Chinese government have led to growing unease in the United States. In the summer of 2020, then-President Donald Trump announced his intention to ban TikTok from operating in the United States. The move sparked controversy and confusion, with many questioning the legality and motivation behind the proposed ban. At its core, Trump's desire to ban TikTok was driven by concerns over national security and the app's ties to China. Trump and his supporters feared that the app could be used to spy on Americans and collect sensitive data. In particular, Trump was concerned that the Chinese government could use TikTok to spread propaganda and interfere in the 2020 US presidential election. To understand why Trump was so concerned about TikTok's ties to China, it's important to look at the broader context of US-China relations. Over the past few years, the US and China have been engaged in an escalating trade war, with both countries imposing tariffs and other economic sanctions on each other. The US has also accused China of engaging in intellectual property theft and other unfair trade practices. Against this backdrop, TikTok became a flashpoint for tensions between the two countries. In July 2020, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that the US was considering banning TikTok and other Chinese social media apps, citing concerns over national security. The US government had already taken similar actions against other Chinese tech companies, such as Huawei and ZTE, which were accused of spying on behalf of the Chinese government. Trump himself was a vocal critic of TikTok and frequently expressed his support for a ban. In August 2020, he issued an executive order that would have banned TikTok from operating in the US within 45 days. The order cited concerns over TikTok's collection of user data and its ties to the Chinese Communist Party. However, the proposed ban faced legal challenges and opposition from within the US government. Later on, a federal judge issued an injunction against the ban, ruling that it was likely unconstitutional and violated the First Amendment's protections of free speech. The judge also noted that there was no evidence to support the government's claims that TikTok posed a national security threat. Despite the legal challenges, Trump continued to push for a ban and tried to force a sale of TikTok's US operations to an American company. He even gave his tentative approval to a deal that would have seen TikTok's US operations sold to Oracle and Walmart. However, the deal ultimately fell through, with both sides blaming the other for the breakdown in negotiations. The situation with TikTok became even more complicated when Trump lost the 2020 presidential election to Joe Biden. The Biden administration, instead, took a more conciliatory approach toward China and asked a federal court to delay proceedings in the TikTok case. He signed an executive order that sought to review the security risks posed by apps like TikTok, and the court granted the request, effectively putting the proposed ban on hold. The order directed the Commerce Department to assess the apps and recommend action to address any security concerns. Notwithstanding this, the Biden administration has signaled that it will continue to scrutinize Chinese tech companies and their operations in the US, and there is likely to be an ongoing debate over the appropriate balance between national security concerns and free speech protections.
Yet, in 2022, President Joe Biden signed a legislation that restricts the use of TikTok on US government devices and networks. The ban on TikTok on government official devices has also been implemented by several countries, including India, which banned TikTok along with several other Chinese apps in 2020, citing concerns over national security and data privacy. The ban was a result of a border conflict between India and China that led to tensions between the two countries. The United States and India are not alone in the decision to ban TikTok on official devices. Australia, Canada and the European Union have also expressed concerns over Chinese influence in the country and banned TikTok on government-issued devices. Other countries, such as Pakistan, Bangladesh and Indonesia, have also either banned or restricted TikTok's usage within their countries. The implications of the ban on TikTok on government official devices are significant. Firstly, it signals a growing concern among governments worldwide over the handling of user data by tech companies, particularly those owned by foreign governments. This concern is not limited to TikTok but extends to other Chinese-owned companies such as Huawei, which has also been banned in several countries over concerns about national security. Secondly, the ban on TikTok highlights the potential impact of geopolitics on the tech industry. The tensions between China and other countries, particularly the United States, have spilled over into the tech industry, leading to bans and restrictions on Chinese-owned companies. This has significant implications for the global tech industry, which relies heavily on international cooperation and trade. The ban on TikTok has also raised questions about the role of government in regulating the tech industry. While governments have a responsibility to protect national security and ensure the safety of their citizens, the banning of apps raises concerns about censorship and the stifling of innovation. Some argue that the banning of TikTok is an example of overreach by governments and that it sets a dangerous precedent for the future of the tech industry. However, in December 2022, ByteDance and TikTok admitted that ByteDance employees had inappropriately accessed the IP addresses of US users of TikTok, including journalists critical of the company. The Justice Department is investigating this as potential improper surveillance. This adds further scrutiny to the potential national security threats that TikTok poses and seems to justify the various governments' move to restrict the use of TikTok on government devices. To add to the growing rivalry between US and China, in March 2023, the Wall Street Journal reported that the Biden administration is pushing for ByteDance to sell its share in TikTok or face a ban on the app in the US. This represents a significant shift in the Biden administration, which has been accused by some Republicans for not taking a firm position to address the possible threat to national security that TikTok poses. When contacted by CNN, TikTok did not dispute the Wall Street Journal report on the US's divestiture request but did not reveal more. On the other hand, China has repeatedly denied the US government's allegations that it uses TikTok as a tool for espionage. Chinese officials assert that the accusations are baseless and rooted in political motivations, rather than actual security concerns. They maintain that the Chinese government respects and abides by international laws, and that it has no intention of meddling in the affairs of other countries. China has also pointed out that the accusations are hypocritical, given the United States' history of surveillance activities. They reference the infamous NSA surveillance program PRISM, which was exposed by Edward Snowden in 2013. Chinese authorities argue that the United States is merely projecting its own espionage activities onto other nations. China has also accused the US of using national security as a pretext for a broader campaign against Chinese technology companies. To protect its interests, in 2020, China updated its export control laws to include specific technologies that are used by apps like TikTok, such as the algorithms that power TikTok's recommendation engine. The move was widely seen as a way for China to prevent the sale of TikTok's technology to foreign companies. Additionally, China has used its state media to promote the app and push back against US criticism. In response to the Biden administration's request for the divestiture of TikTok from its Chinese parent company, China has stated that it would strongly oppose the request and that the Chinese government's approval would be required for any potential sale. Chinese officials have voiced their concern over the US government's request, arguing that the decision unfairly targets a successful Chinese company. They maintain that TikTok has implemented strict data security and privacy measures, and that the US government's concerns are unfounded. The Chinese government has called for a fair, transparent, and non-discriminatory environment for businesses to operate in, emphasizing the importance of respecting market principles and international economic and trade rules. They have criticized the US administration's request as a violation of these principles and have urged the US to reconsider its decision.
On 23 March 2023, the US held a House of Energy and Commerce Committee hearing where TikTok's Singaporean chief executive, Chu Shou Zi, faced more than 50 US lawmakers, who grilled him on TikTok's ties to Beijing and the data security practices of the app. Before we find out more about Chu's testimony at the hearing, we must first understand how this unlikely Singaporean got involved in the TikTok saga between the US and China. Born in Singapore in 1981, Chu reportedly came from a humble background with his father working in construction and his mother a bookkeeper. He speaks fluently in both English and Mandarin. As part of Singapore's mandatory military conscription for Singaporean men, he served two years of national service as an officer of the Singapore Armed Forces. Chu attended college at Hua Chong Institution, a top college in Singapore, before obtaining a bachelor's degree of economics from University College London. He later received an MBA from Harvard Business School, where he had an internship stint with Facebook while it was still a growing startup. After completing his education, Chu had a stint as an investment banker at Goldman Sachs. He later joined Xiaomi, a Chinese electronics company, as its chief financial officer. Chu played a significant role in Xiaomi's initial public offering in 2018, which raised $4.7 billion, making it the world's biggest IPO since Alibaba's in 2014. In 2021, Chu joined TikTok as chief financial officer but he was appointed chief executive officer of the company soon after. His experience at Xiaomi made him an excellent fit for ByteDance, as he had a deep understanding of both the Chinese market and the technology industry. Chu's appointment as CEO was seen as a sign that ByteDance was committed to growing TikTok into a global brand, and that the company was willing to take steps to address the concerns of governments and regulators around the world. Under Chu's leadership, TikTok has continued to grow in popularity, and he has been instrumental in expanding TikTok's reach into new markets, including the United States and Europe. Interestingly, its Singaporean CEO is not the only tie TikTok has with Singapore. TikTok's current regional headquarters is located in Singapore, and the company's decision to relocate here appears to be a part of its effort to distance itself from its Chinese parent company, ByteDance. Nonetheless, it is no surprise that Singapore has been chosen as a base for TikTok. Singapore has become a leading tech hub in Asia, with a robust startup ecosystem and a supportive government that is committed to investing in innovation and technology. Singapore is also home to many international tech companies, including Google, Facebook, and Amazon, which have established regional headquarters in the country. Singapore has so far taken a neutral stance towards the US and China in the TikTok controversy because it recognizes the importance of maintaining good relations with both countries. Singapore is highly dependent on both China and the US for trade and investment, and therefore cannot afford to take sides in any major geopolitical dispute that may damage its economic interests. So, coming back to Chu, TikTok's CEO. Was he able to convince the panel of lawmakers at the hearing that TikTok did not pose a threat to national security in the US? Apparently not. During the hearing, a rare display of bipartisanship was observed as both the Democrats and Republicans sought to crack down on TikTok. Republican Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers called for TikTok to be banned in the US, while Chu stressed the company's independence from China and played up its US ties. However, many lawmakers interrupted Chu's testimony to express their disbelief, claiming that TikTok is a weapon by the Chinese Communist Party to spy on you, manipulate what you see, and exploit for future generations. While national security was expected to be the primary focus of the hearing, multiple lawmakers also highlighted concerns about TikTok's impact on children. TikTok has launched several features to provide additional safeguards for younger users, including setting a new 60-minute default for daily time limits for those under the age of 18. However, lawmakers criticized the feature as being too easy for teens to bypass. Chu's responses to lawmakers were described as nebulous, and he was compared to Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, who also frustrated some members of Congress during his 2018 testimony before the same House committee. Outside the hearing room, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said TikTok should be ended one way or another, but noted that there are different ways of doing that, and that he did not know if it would be sufficient for TikTok to be divested from its Chinese parent company. The top U.S. diplomat said he believed the app is a threat to U.S. national security, but would not outright say that it should be banned. All in all, Chu did not appear to have convinced Washington, and was even criticized for not being forthcoming enough with his answers.
If the US eventually does impose a ban on TikTok, there would be significant consequences for creators and businesses. For creators, a ban on TikTok would mean losing access to a platform that has enabled them to build significant followings and monetize their content. Many creators on TikTok have turned their accounts into full-time careers, earning money through brand partnerships, sponsored content, and product promotions. Without access to TikTok, these creators would need to find alternative platforms to reach their audiences, which could be a significant challenge. Businesses that rely on TikTok for marketing and advertising would also be impacted by a ban. TikTok has become an essential platform for many businesses looking to reach younger audiences, with many brands investing significant resources into creating TikTok-specific content. A ban on TikTok would mean losing access to this valuable audience, and businesses would need to find alternative platforms to reach these consumers. The creator economy, worth $100 billion, and the associated employment supply chain, are likely to face significant disruption should the ban be enacted. The TikTok controversy is unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. Yet, the app's popularity shows no signs of slowing down, and concerns about its security risks are likely to persist. As technology continues to evolve and permeate every aspect of daily life, one can only hope that the US and China, as well as governments from all over the world, are able to strike a balance between protecting national security interests and fostering innovation and economic growth. And hopefully, the growing tensions between China and the US do not escalate further. Meanwhile, as China navigates the tension it has with the US, it is facing strong competition from Singapore's insane mega port project that aims to rival Shanghai's status as the world's busiest container port. Watch this video on how Singapore plans to win China with its secret plan.